Hello, 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 it's Ice Chad's back again with another nostalgic console retro style video coming at you with a bish bash. Anyway, moving swiftly on. <laughs> Today's video is about the Sega Genesis. If you're from the US or any other part of the world, it was the Sega Mega Drive. Now, the um, Sega Mega Drive was uh, released in 1988 in Japan and 1989 in the North America and most of the other Americas. And then in 1990, it was released in Europe. So we had to wait two whole years before we were allowed to play on the J on the Genesis. And we called it the Mega Drive. Just to make things... Anyway, um, so the machine was produced from 1988 to 1997. So it had a good run of, uh, of nine years. Um, it sold 30 million copies worldwide and had a massive, massive games catalogue. Um, Sega tried to keep up with the release of the PlayStation uh, and um, other 32-bit machines that were being released in the 90s uh, with the introduction. Let me just show you the picture of the... That's the Mega Drive as it was anyway. That one there is a Japanese one. <laughs> um, I, I, I kind of went for... I, I actually liked the look of the Japanese one because it had the nice red and uh, sort of like bits along the bottom there. Um, whereas the European one ha uh, had white flashes underneath where it said 16-bit. Um, uh, so yeah, the, the, the little bit was white. And I believe the US one not only said Genesis on it, <laughs> Sega Genesis, but I think it was also grey. The flash underneath was grey. And I think it had a different coloured reset button as well for the US. I think it was white. Um, I didn't ever own a US one, to be honest. A friend of mine had a Japanese import one which was pretty cool because you got Japanese games, but you couldn't understand what they were saying because it was all in Japanese, obviously. So yes, so in 1991, they released the Sega Mega CD. 32-bit goodness. Um, all your games on a CD. The compact disc was starting to um, pick up in its popularity. Um, it was a thing, officially a thing. And Sega decided to try and combat the 32-bit... Um, kind of competition that they would release the Mega CD. It's pretty popular, um, not hugely, I, mean, I think they sold somewhere like 600,000 machines, I think, somewhere in that region. I'm not entirely sure, don't quote me on that one. Um, but basically, Sega were floundering a little bit because the set, I don't think the Mega CD was as popular as they'd hoped it was going to be. Um, and there was room, there was the whole sort of PlayStation thing going on as well. So they decided then that after people had gone out and spent all their hard-earned money on a Mega CD unit, that they would then release the 32X. <laughs> Brilliant. And go back to using a console. Really, Sega. Change back to console after getting everyone to buy CDs for your previous console. This was 94, so it was three years, only three years after the Mega CD was released. So essentially what Sega did was say... Okay, we'll extend the life of your Sega Mega Drive by making the um, Mega CD. So if you go out and buy your CDs, get your 32-bit. Roll up, roll up, get your 32-bit here. So people invested in their, their this Mega CD. And then they said, you know what? Actually, we're going to do the 32X as a standalone machine. We're going back to console, uh, to um, cartridges. No, it's not going to happen. And then, shortly after that, I can't remember what year it was, um, but I will cover it in a later video. They went, do you know what? We've done the Mega CD. We've done the whole 32X thing. Do you know what? We're just going to release the Sega Saturn, and then that'll be it then. And everyone was like, really, Sega? Come on now. You know, we've invested a lot of money in your hardware, and most consoles per generation last around about 10, 9, 10 years. And within sort of, or what, six years, you've released three consoles? Mm, that's not going to cut it, I'm afraid. So you're getting us to... Um, that, essentially, that was Sega's downfall. Uh, and their sales slowly went down. Um, and then the Dreamcast was obviously the final machine that they made. Which, again, will be covered in a later video. So there we go. So let's go into the games. Now, these are in alphabetical order of games that I owned. Uh, or own. Um, and... Uh, 
really hard to choose from favourites, so I've just basically chosen games that were kind of iconic for me because I either played them a lot or um, they have, you know, brings, evoke certain memories. So the first one up is Columns. Um, basically Sega's answer to Tetris. Uh, <laughs> it was two player as well. Uh, you, if you had another controller, you could have two player on the same screen, which is pretty cool. Um, rather than shapes, you had to worry about colours and gems and so on and so forth. But essentially, uh, it was the same. You know, you, you basically had to have three of the same colour next to each other and it would disappear and give you points. You had extra points if it was diagonal or horizontal or whatever, or you got more than three in a row. So on and so forth. You know the score by now, I would have thought. Um, this was released in 1990. Um, so this, I think I got this on a multi cartridge pack. Uh, I had a few other games with it as well that, for the life of me, I cannot remember, and it's really, really irritating me. I've been sat here for about 20 minutes trying to work out what cartridge or what other games was on it. It was like a best of or a game compilation thing, um, but for the life of me, I can't remember. Uh, another game which, um, kind of was around the same time 1990s is um, Klax. Uh, now again it was another sort of like Tetris-y kind of columns-y kind of game. Um, in, I, I had this for the Commodore Amiga as well uh, and I, <laughs> I remember playing this quite a lot actually and my mum was a massive fan of this game. Uh, if you're watching mum <laughs> maybe you, maybe you should um, oh I pointed the wrong way maybe, maybe you should uh, dig out the old Mega Drive and, and give it another go uh, so um, yeah this was 1990 uh, again you had to uh, make uh, sort of like patterns of, of three tiles of the same colour either up uh, across or diagonal if you had more than four you got extra bonus points and so on and so forth on this one I thought although you don't see it in the video um the you can actually throw the tiles back up the um the board and they sort of like you know so if you think oh i don't really want a blue one right now on my board you can only hold five tiles on the on the paddle so if you're thinking oh you know i kind of need that blue one and i've got a red one in the way so you could throw the red one up catch the blue one drop it down and then so on and so forth if you were skilled enough and if you had enough forethought and and so on to be able to um to be able to do that so uh yeah <laughs> Yeah, it was a pretty tricky game, but it does bring back uh, memories of uh, my mum struggling and swearing <laughs> playing this. <laughs> Sorry, mum. So, next up, Madden 93. Released in 1992, funnily enough, at the end of, I believe. Um, as they are now, you always get the latest of the EA sports game. It's always one year ahead. It's always, like, for example, now it's FIFA 17 will be out in September. Um, again, this brings back so many memories uh, playing in my mate's summer house. Um, we used to play this and NHL 97. Uh, actually, loads of NFL, NFL games in 96, 97, so on and so forth. Uh, I think the Madden series ran up to 97 or 98 on the on the Mega Drive. And then I, I kind of, after that, I started getting on the PlayStation. Uh, Madden 2003, for example. Um... Yeah, drinking Pepsi in the summer house during the summer holidays, playing this. You could have two players on the same team or against each other. Um, yeah, we used to play an absolute ton of this game and it was great, really good fun. And it's how I learned uh, the rules of American football. So there you go. Because over here in the UK, we didn't, although we could watch American football on Channel 4, uh, essentially you had to wait until three two three in the morning and i was at the age where staying up till that late was still frowned upon by the parents so uh, <laughs> yeah this is how i got my american football fix and then uh so yeah this was 1993 or 92 actually and then going back to 1988 this was released I th you could get this pretty much uh, straight away as soon as you got your um a japanese mega drive was Space Harrier 2. Now I played Space Harrier 1 on the Sega Master System and I used to play this in the arcade as well whenever I could find it. Uh, quite enjoyed it, it was something a little bit different, essentially it was Afterburner <laughs> with, it was Afterburner with a man 
instead of a plain. Um, graphics were pretty good. The sound was pretty good. The music was really good. Really tough game, though. Very tough game. Uh, I don't think I ever completed it, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this game. Uh, so this was 1988. And then 1991, the follow-up to one of my favourite games... Uh, arrived in the form of Super Hang On. So the Sega Master System version of Hang On was pretty much uh, pretty basic. Uh, it was flat, there were no hills, and you couldn't choose uh, any different countries or anything, and the music was... Uh, in fact, there was no music. Whereas this kind of took a little bit from uh, Outrun, so it took the background music style kind of thing from Outrun, and the hills and the undulations and the scenery from, from Outrun. Um, and it was nice, fast moving. The scenery moved by pretty quickly. Um, it gave you a good feeling of speed. Uh, you, you had There was like a little turbo button you could hit. Uh, when you're, as you can see there, the uh, speed is flashing red and white. When it hits that, you can hit the... Uh, turbo boost button and, and zoom off into the uh, into the unknown and hopefully not crash you had about four i think it was like 50 seconds to get through each checkpoint and then you could move on to the next country to try the next track in the next country pretty good game really good game i spent a lot of time playing it um outrun and um hang on pretty much my favorite driving racing -y type games of, of that era and finally uh in 92 uh, Sega did me the favour of uh, releasing the follow-up to Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap. Um, no, they didn't actually. They'd already released the follow-up, which I didn't actually own. <laughs> they released Wonder Boy in Monster World, which is the fifth um, instalment. Uh, very similar to um, Wonder Boy 3 and Wonder Boy in Monster Land, which is the second one. Uh, in fact, the map at the start of this um, is um, kind of like a, a re rehash of the start of Wonder Boy and Monster Land on the Sega Master System. Um, th there was another one after this as well, I believe, which was um, a bit more fast-paced and there were sort of mini-games in it where you had to ride a dragon and it was like a bit of a sideways scrolly shooter. I didn't really get into it, to be honest. But um, this one I played it out. Um, I Again, I don't think I ever completed it. But uh, I played it a lot, a lot. Um, I remember the Ocarina, which I always thought was a bit of a... Um, although it was a little bit of a nod to Legend of Zelda, it's probably getting a bit too close to the mark, really, to be honest. Um, but you had to find the Ocarina, and when you find it and you take it to one of the characters, they teach you how to play it. And then you have to learn the tunes by different button presses. Uh, so it would be like C, B, A, B, A, C... And it would play a tune, and then when you get to certain doors, you have to play the correct tune to get the doors to open. And I remember actually physically writing them all down, <laughs> trying to remember which were which. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty pretty tough uh, tough game. I don't think I ever completed it, if I remember rightly. Maybe I should um, do a series on it and see if I can actually run through and complete it. That'd be pretty cool. Um, let me know if you would like to see that. Pop it in the comment section. So yeah, that's the Sega Mega Drive Stroke Genesis um, in all its glory. Uh, the 90s wouldn't have been the same without it, to be fair. Um, do you remember anything specific about the Mega Drive? Did you own a Mega Drive? Or were you uh, Team Nintendo and Sega were the enemy? Um, I actually owned a NES and a Mega Drive around about the same time. Um, certainly towards, I think it was towards the end of the Mega Drive's life, I managed to get myself a SNES. Uh, I never actually owned a Nintendo Entertainment System, um, unfortunately. Boo, sad face. My friend did. Uh, I had the Master System, and back in the Master System days, there was no way I could have afford, afforded both. And I was such a Wonder Boy fan that um, <laughs> I was never going to change uh, to the Nintendo. But um, yeah, so if you've got any favourites, um, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you've got any specific memories of, of your Sega Mega Drive. Um, did you always want a Mega Drive but never have one? Did you always have a Mega Drive but always wanted a SNES? <laughs> let me know in the comment section down below. My next video will be the Sega Saturn, because I'm doing these in the order that I actually owned the consoles. Um, so I think I owned the Saturn before... 
I got the SNES because I think I, if I remember rightly, I bought the Saturn, sold it for a SNES because I didn't really like the Saturn. The Saturn didn't impress me as much as it probably could have done. So I went back to a SNES. So yeah, tips, tricks and comments in the comment section down below. Hit the like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Bye for now.